I'd like to describe a, um, an elderly man to you. This elderly man wears a baseball cap all the time, a worn out baseball cap. A baseball cap, the same cap that he's worn year after year after year. And he had a shock of white hair that came out the bottom of the baseball cap that covered the tops of his ears and went in every direction because he didn't comb his hair before he put his baseball cap on. And he wore a sweatsuit every day of his life covered by a robe, a bathrobe that may have had orange juice stains on it or whatever, but it was a comfortable bathroom. And white socks and slippers. And this fellow would walk out on his deck or would walk around the yard and that was the costume. August or December. It never changed. He always dressed similar to that. That was my father. Now, if you would have seen him like that, you never would have guessed he was a resident of Lake Pobera. <laughs> but that's the way he dressed. That's the way he was comfortable. So, what Jesus has said about not judging people by their appearance is important, isn't it? I'm, I never could guess that someone that looked like my dad was a, was a resident of an exclusive neighborhood like that. Um, but he was. And people loved him. They loved him. And he'd be up on the deck and he looked like Grandpa Gump from Warts Total Hole, Arlen's Arm, or whatever. And they'd pass by and they'd go, hey, Harv. Um, but you might judge him differently if you were deceived. Now, we also judge people not only by the way they look, but by the position they hold in life. Amen? By the way, the position they hold in life. Um, I knew a fellow once who could quote Shakespeare. Could absolutely, you could open up a volume of the complete works of Shakespeare and not tell him what work that you were reading from, but simply read the verse and he would tell you what play it came from, what sonnet it came from, what scene, what act. He could tell you exactly where you found that in Shakespeare. And that person never had a formal education. Never had one day of junior high school. Never had one day of senior high school. That person was Abraham Lincoln. Abraham Lincoln loved Shakespeare. Even though he never had formal schooling. So to judge this rail splitter, you would never think that you were going to get Shakespeare out. And yet, he especially loved the tragedies. Uh, Shakespeare's tragedies. We can't judge somebody by the way they look or by the position they hold in life. You remember the Pharisee that stood in the front of the church said, I thank God I'm not like other sinners. I don't sin. I don't, I don't rob. I don't commit adultery. I keep the law. I'm so good. I'm not like that tax collector in the back. Thank you, God. Lord, save us self-righteous Christians. Amen. I thank you I'm not like him. But we do that. You see, this guy's position in life was he was a tax collector. That's probably how he could earn a living. And he was despised by people in his community because many tax collectors robbed. They took more than they should have. 
but maybe this fellow didn't. He was there, he was praying, he was asking for forgiveness. Oh Lord, have mercy on me and for a sinner. That was his prayer. We judge. Yes. Now we have to make right judgments. Understand what Jesus said. He said, don't judge someone by their appearances, but use right judgment. Let me tell you why we don't judge someone by their appearance or by their position in life. <clears throat> we don't do it because, first of all, it is judgmental, isn't it? Now, what does Jesus say about being judgmental? Anybody remember? As you judge, so shall ye be judged, right? So shall ye be judged. Um, I remember a, a, a kid in, in high school. Uh, he, he walked funny. In fact, he walked on the very tips of his toes all the time. It looked like he was prowling the balls. But it's just the way he walked. And people made fun of this kid. They absolutely made fun of him. They were judging him for the way he walked. Do you understand what I'm saying? And this kid went out for baseball. And he went out for a pitcher position. And in high school, he had like a 90 mile an hour fastball. Now, what do you want to bet that the coach didn't say to him, we don't want your kid to walk funny. <laughs> right? Take your 90 mile an hour fastball and go home. We don't want you because you walk a little funny. But he could whip that ball straight down the pike, 90 miles an hour. And I don't know about you, but most high school players are not coordinated enough to hit that kind of fastball. We're still developing. And uh, our hand-eye coordination, even at that late day. He went on to be a championship pitcher uh, in the high school league and then in college. Uh, so we can't always judge people. We're not supposed to judge people. Uh, to be judgmental. Do you do it? Do I do it? Absolutely, don't we? We all, we all have done it. Um, when you come down off of I-35 and you're coming down to 7th Street traffic way and there's someone sitting there on a milk crate and they got that sign up, right? And it says, Homeless, I'm hungry. And you look at them, and without talking to them, you say, yeah, you just want money for a bottle of booze. Is that being judgmental? It, I don't care if the 99 persons before him just wanted a bottle of booze. This person might be hungry. So I roll down the window and say, hi, I'm Pastor Gary from Central United Methodist Church, and we have a food pantry right up the street, right? And there's a hot meal program right up the street, and if you hop in, I'll take you up there. I'll offer them what I have, right? And it's a way of being non-judgmental. It's a way of saying, I don't think you're trying to cheat me simply because you're homeless. I see too many homeless people who are honest. Too many homeless people who don't want to be on the street. Too many homeless people that if they had a way to get off, they would do it. Too many homeless people who are bothered by the very mental issues that we pray for today. And either are undiagnosed or can't afford the drugs that's been given to them so that they can treat their mental illness. And so they stay on the street. But you don't know that until you adopt the position that every story is important. And that every person has the right to be heard before we judge them. Not based on how they're dressed. Not based on the job they have. Or where they <clears throat> live. You all in Wyandotte County, you don't know anything about being judged, do you? No. <laughs> Now, let me tell you, it goes the other way. When I lived in Hamilton, when I lived in Hamilton, Kansas, 
The mechanic, there was one mechanic in Hamilton, Kansas, and he used to say, when someone comes in here for a flat tire or something, if it says Johnson County on their plate, I double charge them. <laughs> because all the people in Johnson County are rich. Isn't that right? Come visit DeSoto, amen? Um, we do have a country club, though. I can't get in it, but we have one. <laughs> all people from Wyandotte County aren't poor. All people from Wyandotte County don't have a record. Driving in Johnson County, you see a W Y, a license plate. Three children walk the door. Right? Not everyone in Johnson County drives a BMW. Or, it, or has a perfect life. Exactly. It has it all together. We judge each other based upon the way we look and based on our position in life, and we all will do it at some time or another. Jesus says, <coughs> don't stop at appearances. Get to know somebody. Get to understand somebody. And then judge rightly. Judge rightly. Amen? I forgive you your sin because I am sin. I forgive you your weaknesses because I am weak. Amen. Jean has more faults than I can put in a box and carry out of this church. <laughs> but the other day I saw her going down the sidewalk with a wagon load of my faults. Isn't that right? We're all like that. The minute that I begin to point my finger at someone else and to judge them without even knowing them, I'm really pointing at myself. When I point out your weaknesses, it's because I'm feeling inadequate. Oftentimes we build ourselves up by tearing those around us down. So just let me find your weak point. Just let me find it. And the whole congregation will know it by next week. And we'll all be staring at you and judging you. It's judgmental United Methodist Church. Hopefully it doesn't exist here. That's my hope. So one of the reasons that we don't look at people for their appearance or for their position in life is because it's judgmental. And Jesus tells us, if we judge, we shall be judged. Yes. Also because when we become um, judgmental, we don't love other people as we should love uh, them. Jesus says that we should love each other as we love ourselves. That we owe every single person our love. That is the starting point. Now, it doesn't say that you have to love everything that somebody does. Or that you have to love everything that somebody says. Um, but you do have to love them. Because that person is a child of God, the same as you were a child of God. What makes you a child of God? Is it what you did? Well, I earned it. I earned it. Jesus loves me because I'm so good. I'm so righteous. I'm so holy. If you think I'm holy, you've seen my socks. Because other than that, I fall pretty short at times. There are times when I'm righteous when I'm loving people, but there's times when I'm unrighteous when I'm not. And really, I'm not loving someone when I'm judging them for what they look like or the position that they have in life or where they find themselves. Jesus said, You shall love others as you love yourself. I don't heap loads of ridicule on myself. Um, I, I don't walk around and, and uh, run myself down. I don't want others to do it either. Does that make sense? I'm not saying, go ahead and sit here for the next 20 minutes and call me names. Talk about me behind my back, would you? Go ahead. 
Judge me for the clothes I'm wearing. Judge me for the way I comb my hair or lack thereof. I don't want that to happen to me. And the quickest way for that to happen to me is if I do it to you. Right? The way that I treat you is the way that I should expect you to treat me. And if I, if I do anything other than love you, then I should expect that you're going to do something other than love me. If I want your love, I have to love. Does that make sense? And the only way that I can love you is if I don't judge you. Because love starts when we suspend judgment. Love starts when we suspend judgment. Now, we'll get to know each other when we love one another. And then there may be some things about you that I don't like. And there may be some things about me that you don't like. My wife and I were talking about a couple that's getting married. And I said to her, marriage is hard. Paul. And she looked at me and she said, yep. Yeah. And I said, especially when you're raising kids and paying bills, marriage is hard, huh? And she said, yep. Yeah. It especially is. And then I said to her, you know what I found out, Vicki, after 30 years of being married to you? She kind of looked at me like I'm about to fire a return salvo at her. <laughs> I said, what I found out after 30 years is you are the finest person that I know. You are absolutely, Vicki is absolutely the finest person I know. Doesn't mean I agree with everything that comes out of her mouth. It doesn't mean that we get along all the time. But she's still the finest person I know. As far as her attitudes goes, her loves for people goes, she is a non-judgmental person. Um, someone to emulate. But it doesn't mean I agree with her every time. Because we're married and I've lived with the woman 30 years. <laughs> and it's the same when she looks at me. I'm not married to y'all, but I'm learning more about you. We've been together for 24 years, and I'm learning things about you. And just about the thing, I know everything that I need to know about Teresa Rutgers. Yeah. I've known her for a long time. I know everything about her. She surprises me. But I still love her. I still do. I still do. I've known Pam longer than that. Pam, love it. I've known you. We crossed the Red Sea together, didn't we, sister? <laughs> We've known each other for... And I still learn things about Pam. Almost every time I'm with her. And I still love you, Pam. I still love you. Hmm? Thank you. When we suspend judgment of one another is when we can begin to love each other. With all of our differences, with all of our faults, with all of our foibles, with, with the way we look different, the way we act differently, the way we speak differently, the way we practice our faith differently, it takes all kinds to be the church of Jesus Christ. And so we will not be judgmental, we will love each other. Because if we don't love one another, then we are denying each other mercy and grace. Mercy. Now, who, what gives you the right to deny anybody mercy? Again, how did you become children of God? Because you earned it? Or because God extended God's mercy? Because God extended God's grace to you. You are acceptable to God this day just as you are. How many times have I said that in the course of 24 years? You are acceptable to God today just as you are. And God says, right there where you are, here's grace and here's mercy. I know what you are, I know what you've done, and I forgive you, and I offer you God's grace, I offer you the chance to walk with me. To walk in fellowship with me. 
to walk in faith with me. Now, if God does that for each and every one of us, every single day that we live, what gives us the right to withhold mercy or grace from anybody that we encounter? By judging them first and pushing them off. By refusing to love them because they're a Democrat. <laughs> Hard for that word to come off my lips being a good Johnson County boy there. <laughs> Democrat. <laughs> or because person's a Catholic. <laughs> or this or that person belongs to the Masons. And we know that they have a conspiracy against the government. Think of how we judge people. We judge people by the race by the clubs they belong to, by what they do for a living, by the way they look at us just one time. Someone comes up, they, we got to walk through this culture with blinders on now. You walk downtown, you go into a store, you look at someone, they come up and go, what are you looking at? We're pretty sensitive culture, aren't we? We have no right to deny grace or mercy to anyone. And so I've asked you today, now to use that phrase, as you're talking about it, look at that. Look at that. Look at the way she behaves in church. Look at the way. Look at that. Look at that. That young lady's walking on a cane. Now you know she did something early in her life. We offer each other mercy and grace every <coughs> single day of the week. Use right judgment, but never be people who are judgmental.